What's up guys, today we're answering the question that's been asked since the beginning of time. Should you heat your house with a wood stove or a pellet stove? <sighs> no, it's, it's just not true. They haven't been asked in that since the beginning, of the, time, the beginning of time. These stoves haven't been out that long. Just not true. But it's a question we get a lot, so let's get started. Okay, so you can see our little makeshift setup we set outside the store, that way we could run them side by side for the sake of the video. So before you blast me on the comments, I know this is not correct to this chimney stack here. We just wanna get a little draft on it, on it so we could uh, get these rolling for the video. So before we get started, make sure to subscribe to our channel. It helps us out a ton. Also, if you're in the Denver, Colorado area, we're local here, come to our showroom, check out these products for yourself. So the biggest question we get is what's more efficient, what's better, wood or pellet? We're gonna tell you. You gotta stay tuned to the end of this video so we can tell you the answer to that. The truth is neither one of them is necessarily better. We're gonna dive into how one can be better based on personal circumstances. So a lot of times people make a blanket statement Oh, you said this was better and you said this better. No, think about yourself. Think about what your needs are and we'll tell you which stove may be better for your particular needs. So the first category, we're gonna break this down into categories to decide which one um, may be better for you. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is ease of use between the two, between a pellet stove and a wood stove. And we're gonna start with that because I'm gonna literally start these stoves up so you can see them on. Um, so let's start with ease of use. So we have the Quadrifier Trekker series here. And I'm just gonna show you this. This is a wireless Bluetooth control center, I guess you'd say, or thermometer. Almost look, kind of looks like a nest, but essentially this would go on your wall somewhere. Obviously right, not right next to the stove because you don't want it reading there. And this is where you're gonna cycle through your controls. I don't want to mess with it. But essentially I put it in startup mode. Um, I don't wanna open the lid, cause that will turn it off. But you basically fill the top up with pellets, set your thermostat, depending on the stove, each stove is very different, but essentially you turn it on. And the idea with a pellet stove is there, it's gonna auto feed into this burn pot here. You can see it's starting to spark here. It's starting to get going. Um, the pellets are gonna feed, an auger is gonna feed them into the burn pot where you have a combustion fan going and pushing oxygen into that burn pot and creating a fire. Now, the idea with a pellet stove is you can a lot more easy, nah, that's, that's bad grammar, that's just bad grammar. You can very easily um, regulate temperature because you can run this on a thermostat and I'll dive into why that has its advantages in a second. Um, because based off of that speed, the auger motor is gonna turn, let's say you need more heat, it's gonna turn a lot faster and dump a lot more pellets into that burn pot to create a larger, hotter fire. And then when it needs to kick itself back, it's gonna slowly ease off of that. So, you know, there's just airplanes everywhere, right by an airport. Um, it's bad, bad for YouTube videos, but I guess great that the airplanes are out and about, but uh, that's besides the point. Um, I forgot, what, what was I talking about, Elijah? I don't even remember. Yeah, he wasn't paying attention either. Um, <laughs> no, but the idea is you can put this on a thermostat and sort of set it and forget it. And we'll talk about those advantages here. While we're doing that, uh, while this is firing up, let's get the wood stove started. Okay, so now here's our wood stove. I set up some kindling in here ahead of time. And we have some fire starter squares. now. You probably won't need this many typically, but for the sake of the video, I kind of want to get this rolling rather quickly. So I put four fire starters in here. Now you can already see a difference in the sense that I'm having to kneel down and get in here and manually start a fire. And again, we don't want to make blanket statements that one is better than the other. This is an example of what I'm talking about where we need to think about individual needs. So, for example, a lot of our pellet customers um, maybe are getting a little more elderly. They're, they can't move around quite as much as they used to. Uh, bringing in and hauling in firewood, getting down on the ground, um, 
your personal circumstances may not allow you to be as physical as you once were. That would be a great example where based on your individual needs, a pellet stove may make more sense because the startup is less, takes less of a physical toll on you. Um, on the flip side of that, people may be like, I love starting a fire. That's like the best part about having a stove is getting in here and starting with a fire. That's way better. See how, see how based on your needs, one isn't necessarily better than the other, but think about what's important to you and what, what values you have when it comes to, or what your needs are when it comes to heating a stove. So wood stove is definitely gonna take a bit longer. We wanna make sure our air control is open all the way so it has plenty of oxygen. We'll kind of crack the door, leave, leave this open so it has plenty of air. And what I like to do is once my fire really gets ripping, this door, um, the fire is really gonna be pulling for oxygen it'll start trying to like suck this door shut and you'll kind of see this door start doing something like that. Then we know we're ready to fill this up all the way. And so we'll just kind of let this do its, do its thing for a minute. All right, so our fire is starting to die down a bit. So we'll go ahead and, and top this off. Another variable that we wanted to talk about is um, type of wood. So you can see here, we're burning pine. Now, before you guys blow me up, again, we know pine is not the very best wood out there. You wanna use a good, solid hardwood. But in the words of Lloyd Christmas, we're in the Rockies. <laughs> I mean, we got loads of pine. So you burn what you have. And in Colorado, we got pine everywhere. So that's what we use. So you can see why you wanna build a hot fire first, because these logs are so big they're not gonna combust unless it's hot enough. So get in here, Elijah, see our reburn starting to hap happen? So that's where we're getting our reburn. It's so it's hitting those oxygen tubes and those fire retardant baffles and creating a reburn. So that's what's gonna give us those long burn times. And we'll touch on efficiency in a minute here. You can see we got our pellet stove going and just different type of fires. You can tell they're just different. And again, one's not better than the other. They're just different machines. So one last thing we'll talk about on ease of use and then we'll move on to another category. The idea that we have complete temperature control with a pellet stove is important based off your needs. I'll give you an example. We had an employee and uh, at his house, he only, didn't have access to natural gas or anything. He heated on oil, which is obviously extremely expensive. So he used a wood stove to heat his house. The problem was, is he had to travel a lot. And so when he would travel, obviously his wood stove was off because you cannot operate your wood stove remotely. So he'd keep his thermostat in the high 40. So when he get home, it'd be freezing cold. So one of the things he did to solve that problem was he switched to a pellet stove because what he could do is he could leave for a long weekend, fill up his large hopper with pellets, and then keep it on a thermostat at 55 degrees. So now you're able to regulate the heat in your house even when you're not home. So if you're not home often, pellet stove may be the way to go because it can sort of auto-regulate itself without you. Whereas a wood stove, obviously you have to be there, you have to be feeding the firebox, that kind of thing to uh, help it along. So again, you see how personal circumstances vary what's better and what isn't. And so think about, again, what your personal needs are. So that's ease of use. Easy to start up, basically control it on a thermostat, a little more physically demanding. You have to be there in person to be able to use this. So those are some differences on ease of use. All right, now let's move on to uh, cost of operation. What's gonna be more efficient for your dollar? Again, like we're talking about, circumstances are gonna dictate the answer to this. So let's say you're buying uh, cordwood, you're buying nice solid hardwood, and let's say you're buying pellets. They, uh, it's gonna vary on the region where you're at, but it's gonna be very close in price. So you're kind of splitting hairs on cost of operation. You know, you're buying pellets are about 450 a bag or so around here. Um, so as far as the cost of fuel, it's gonna be very similar. Now, another thing to take into account is pellet stoves uh, require electricity. So we have a couple fans going in here. We have a motor rolling. So your electricity bill may go up a bit using a pellet stove, whereas a wood stove, unless you have a blower on it or something, you're not really using any electricity at all.
So if you're buying your fuel, it's gonna be very, very close, but wood tends, up, tends to be a tiny bit cheaper. Again, not enough, I don't think, to swing the needle one way or the other. Now here's where personal circumstances come into play. Let's say you own property or you have access to free wood. Well then, of course, heating with wood is gonna be more cost effective for you because you have access to free fuel. But you have to take the time to cut down trees, chop and split wood, store it, season it, dry it out, that kind of thing. So it depends on how you monetize your time. But of course, in theory, based on your personal circumstances, cost to operate, if you have access to free wood, wood is gonna win every time. And that's just sort of a no brainer. So it's a little convoluted, but essentially they're very close unless you have access to free wood. Now, one thing we're not really touching on is efficiencies. We're not gonna dive into it too much because um, based on EPA regulations, which changed in 2020, pellet stoves and wood stoves are under the same EPA standards, which means they are both insanely efficient. Um, with wood stoves, you're gonna get eight, nine hour burn times. You're gonna get overnight burns. Very, very efficient, very good on the um, environment. Same with pellet stoves. So they're both from an efficiency standpoint, again, neck and neck. Okay. so. We've let both of these run for about 30 minutes to kind of let them do their things. They're both almost at like running at full capacity, not quite yet, but they're close. So you can see they're neck and neck as far as how long they take to start up. But one thing we wanted to touch on, so we've talked about um, ease of use, we've talked about uh, cost to operate, and uh, so far they're pretty close, unless you have free wood. And uh, now let's talk about long-term care and long-term reliability. So with a wood stove, they're pretty basic. Um, it's essentially a firebox that you fill up with wood. Now there is, we showed you those oxygen tubes with those baffles, that's one way a stove reburns. And there is a damper control, so we have a couple moving parts. But also, some stoves have a catalytic combustor. So those are going to require some annual maintenance to make sure they don't clog or get too dirty. You don't want to be burning dirty newspaper or glossy newspaper, pallet wood, stuff that's going to ruin your catalytic combustor. Um, so there is a little bit of care that you have to think about there. But essentially, nothing is more basic than a wood firebox. We basically have almost little to no moving parts at all. So long-term reliability is not really going to be so much of an issue. Um, like I said, you may lose some efficiencies if your combustor isn't working right or something. If it's not working right, it's almost always user and error. People are always like, oh, catalytic combustors, they always fail. No, they don't fail. It's just people don't take care of them. It's like driving a car for two years and be like, oh, never doing maintenance on it. Be like, oh, stupid car failed. Well, you didn't take care of it. So that's why it failed. That's why you're having problems with your car. Catalytic combustor, it failed because you didn't take care of it. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, there's my little rant there. But essentially, wood stoves are, are pretty much bulletproof. And this is where we're gonna see a real separation between the units. A pellet stove, let's think about it for a second. So we have an auger, an auger feeding pellets, which is controlled by a motor. Then we have a combustion fan blowing oxygen into our firebox. Then we have a convection fan, which is pushing heat out into the room. And then we have a thermostat. You kind of see where I'm going with this? What, oh, we also have an igniter. Don't forget about an igniter. What do we have? We have a lot of moving parts. And you can see, get a look at this here. See, we have a lot of ash buildup already. So we have electronics by a lot of heat and a lot of ash and dirt. Not dirt, it's wood. What do you think that equals? It equals maintenance. So there's a lot more moving parts. Uh, you obviously have electronics to deal with. Pellet stoves are definitely more prone to breaking down and having problems. They are definitely going to require annual maintenance. And so we talked about earlier, if you're um, maybe getting more elderly and you don't have a lot of time to uh, be working or being physical, um, you want to make sure you get a pellet stove from a, a nearby local fireplace shop 
someone that can come out and take care of the stove for you if you aren't able to. Either that, or if you get a pellet stove, you better be mechanically and sound, and you better like you better like to be hands-on with things and do your routine maintenance. If you don't do your routine maintenance, you will have problems. I've been doing this 12 years. I have never had more calls on anything more than pellet stoves. And here's the problem with them is eight out of 10 pellet stove customers, eh, I shouldn't label it that way, I don't really know, but this is what happens. Every December, it'll be 12 degrees outside, our phone will ring. Embers, how am I help you? Yeah, uh, my pellet stove is broken and uh, my, my kids are freezing and uh, I need you to come out and fix it today. Well, it's already December and our, our service schedule is booked out a month. So if, if you have a part that is broken, let's say one piece goes down, this stove is 100% inoperable. You cannot use it. It's essentially a giant paperweight at this point. It will produce zero heat for you. So if you wait until it's already cold to have it serviced, you're probably behind the eight ball and you're gonna uh, deal with some, uh, some very, at the very least, some inconveniences. And if it's your primary heat source, you could be in real trouble. So long-term care is essential that you're doing your annual maintenance on this. So if that idea scares you, you already know your answer, wood stove. Let's say your catalytic combustor is having problems or your damper control is having, your air control is having problems. What's really cool about a wood stove is we still have the ability to use it as a heating source. It may not be functioning at 100% like we want it to, but we can still get heat out of it. Whereas, like I said, with our pellet stove, once it goes down for the count, she's gone. She's gone. You're not getting her back until, until you get her maintenance. So long-term care or long-term reliability, we have to tip the scale so far in the way of wood stoves, it's not even funny. There's no comparison at all. Wood stoves would take the cake every time on that. Okay, so that's enough on long-term reliability and maintenance. Now, let's go down to one uh, that is important to a lot of people, and that's comfort and the way that these stoves are gonna heat, because they do heat different. So, you can tell with our wood stove, come here, Elijah, let's see if you can pick this up. Hopefully my mic's getting it. But do you hear that? The nice crackle of a fire. Some people think that that's just impossible to replace. You can't replicate that. And they're right. So you're gonna have that good old fashioned fireplace feel. And then these stoves predominantly are gonna heat radiantly. So you can feel that nice radiant heat coming off the glass. And that's hard to beat. It's hard to beat, you know, standing next to the stove. It's cold out here today, so it just actually feels really good. And so you're just gonna get that nice, cozy, radiant heat. A pellet stove, on the other hand, you are gonna get some radiant heat through this glass, but to me, it feels more like a furnace, like a pellet furnace, like a gas furnace, because this is blowing hot air right here. And so it's cozy, but I, I don't know. What do you think, Elijah? Feel, feel them, tell me what you think. What feels more cozy to you? This. this yeah. Is more like direct, kind of blowing hard. This is just like yeah. cozy. Like you said, like campfire, just like. Yeah, I agree. But that being said, my grandparents, when I was a kid, had a pellet stove. And uh, when I go spend the night at their house and early in the morning, I could hear it kick on. And I loved going and standing by it. So it's still nice. It's still very, very enjoyable and relaxing. But pretty tough to beat the coziness of a wood stove. That's just my opinion. Also, also noise. So you're, you're getting, the only noise you're getting with this is the crackling of the fire. This, you can, hear, you can hear it running like a machine. And so pellet stoves tend to be louder. So take that into consideration as well. All right, we've been babbling and babbling and babbling. I think we should probably do an overview. I might have confused you more. I don't know. I just information overload. So we should probably just do a little review and then... Uh, let you know what I think. Okay, so in review, the first thing we talked about was ease of use. This is less physically demanding, although you do have to carry around bags of pellets. This is less physically demanding to start. 
and essentially you can use it remotely. So you can leave the, your house, put it on a thermostat, and it's gonna keep maintain perfect temperature in your house. Big plus with a pellet stove. Wood stove, more physically demanding to fire it up. Um, you don't have perfect temperature control. You can of course have big temperature swings if you let this baby rip in your house, <laughs> you could get cooking in a hurry. Um, so that's one issue. So we have to give ease of use to a pellet stove. Now, cost to operate. Again, this is circumstantial, but let's say you have free wood. Of course, I would do a wood stove all day long because you have free fuel, so get a wood stove. Um, but if not, this is neck and neck. I don't really think there's a real true winner where you buy one, one over the other just based on fuel costs alone. So that we'll call that a tie. Now, maintenance and long-term care, we're gonna give, we're gonna rate this a 10 and we're gonna rate this a one. So we're gonna put these on complete opposite ends of the spectrum. Out of all of our heating appliances, nothing is more long-term reliable than a wood stove. Out of all of our heating appliances, there's nothing more long-term headaches and problems than a pellet stove. So take that for what you, win, what you will, but they're complete opposite ends of the spectrum. We gotta give the victory to a wood stove. Now, comfort and the way it's gonna heat your home. By the way, there's stoves that can heat 3,000 plus square feet, wood or pellet. So if it's gonna be a whole home heater, no matter, I mean, unless you have a seven, 8,000 square foot home, so you're not gonna have a problem heating your house either way, no matter what with either stove, but from a comfort level, we just have to give the coziness to a wood stove. You just can't, you can't beat it. You can't beat a wood stove. Also aesthetically, what looks more attractive, that pot of fire or a real fire going? Is it even a question? What do you think? No. Not a question. I mean, that pot of fire, it's pretty in a sense, but it's a, it's a bowl of fire. Like that's, uh, whatever. So anyways, I'm partial in conclusion out of those four categories, wood is gonna take the cake. I'm partial to a wood stove. I think they're pretty hard to beat, but there are circumstances where I think a pellet stove does, um, would be appropriate. Uh, again, if you're elderly or slowing down a bit and you don't wanna be starting fires all the time, or if you're out and about and maintaining temperature control is one of your biggest priorities, again, then go with a pellet stove. So there are circumstances where a pellet stove makes sense. So don't take it as a blanket statement. Oh yeah, Trevor said you get a wood stove. Not always, not always. There are circumstances where this makes sense. So hopefully that helps. Um, we'll be doing some other fuel type videos. Don't forget to subscribe. Come down to the Denver Metro area. You can see these products in person for yourself and hopefully find something that's right for you. Stay tuned for more videos.